Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I just want to talk about how I may start using TypeScript in my videos and just in general. So that may come as a disappointment to a lot of you who are trying to learn JavaScript and you're like, man, I gotta learn TypeScript now. But at the end of the day, TypeScript's not that hard. It's just an extra, it adds a couple of sugars or syntactic sugars to your language that allows it to do some static lookup. So let me let me show you what's up. So the main reason I'm starting to think about using TypeScript is because a lot of times I notice that I'm coding stuff and I have to actually dive into the implementation of what I'm doing. So for example, I have this to do's component and I wanted to do something when someone types and clicks on a checkbox. Okay, so I have this context object that has various things on it and when I click the period, notice that I get some nice IntelliSense uh, hints. Okay, so I can click actions and then I can get a list of all my actions I could use to kind of change my state or do stuff in my application. So in this case, when something changes, I want to toggle a to-do, okay? And then what I could do is when I hover over this, it tells me that it needs an argument of a to-do. So I could simply just do this, okay? So you notice how helpful that was. I didn't have to actually dive into the actions. So what I typically do in JavaScript is I go into my actions file and then I find toggle to do and then I'm here. So that took two extra searches and then I had to make sure I was on the right function, okay? Versus just clicking the dot and then getting a list of everything I can use and clicking it. So that's one main reason why I plan to start using TypeScript is that extra help that it gives you in your editor to be able to dive through your code and understand like what methods you can call, what do they return, what parameters do they take in, etc. And I think that little extra help is invaluable when you're a beginner, right? I first learned using Java, which is a typed language, and I thought it was really easy to learn. I mean, there's a lot of syntax and tokens and extra things you have to understand, like public static void main, but you end up understanding what all those tokens mean right? Public is if it's a public variable or protected or private variable. Static is, is it a static method? Can you do like class dot whatever to access it? Void is what does it return, right? That's, it's returning nothing. Main is the name of the actual function. So you start learning all these different things. Sorry, I didn't mean to get into Java, but, but all those things are helpful. Like the intelligence is absolutely invaluable. And that is one reason why I'm gonna start using, because I notice in my tutorials, I keep forgetting certain things, right? I have to keep looking up my files to remember like what I can do. And then I also, sometimes I spell stuff wrong. So like I type HTML, <clears throat> or I type HTL instead of HTML, and right off the bat, it tells me, hey, you're, you're doing something wrong, so I can come in and fix it. Now with JavaScript, you have to basically set up ESLint and then set up some rules to have it even tell you if you're defining variables that you're not using, right? So like, for example, if I do like const x is equal to 10, uh, right off the bat, I don't know if this is ESLint, this is TypeScript telling me x is declared but the value is never read, okay? So just stuff like that, it's just like the little things that help you in terms of your programming or you're developing that allow you to be a quicker and more efficient developer. And the second thing that I want to showcase with TypeScript that I think is extremely important is, again, when I wanted to search and look at the implementation of toggle to do, what you typically have to do is you have to do a fuzzy search. So I have to go up here and type actions, and then I have to say toggle to do and go into the method. And then I'm here and I can look at the implementation. Now, if I wanted to actually look into save to do's as well, well, I have to find where that is. And that is in a to-dos service. So I have to look up to the to service and then I can go to save to-dos and all that, right? It's a big pain in the butt, honestly. But in TypeScript, you can just do control F12, control F12 and I'm there, right? You see how much easier that was to navigate into the implementation. And then secondly, you could go to the definition as well. So I could just go straight to the interface here. So that ability to go to the definition and implementation, all those, I think you can do some of that in JavaScript, but the support is not that great. With TypeScript, it's a much, much better. So it saves you time with navigating code. And honestly, at the end of the day, 
we don't spend all day writing code. We spend a lot of time just reading code and navigating code and trying to figure out a code path to maybe debug an issue. So being able to quickly dive through the code and find what you're looking for is extremely important. And also to be able to just hover over stuff and get information about what objects really are is also really critical. So keep that in mind. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is like, how do you actually use TypeScript? Well, if you're using like React or Vue, you can just read their docs and they pretty much tell you how to set it up. It's not that hard. With Node, you have to do a little bit more of a manual setup. Like you have to go, you probably have to download TS Node and then you have to, you might have to set up a TS config file, which I had to do. To just basically tell TypeScript like, hey, when you run, make sure you run it for Node and make sure you en enable promises and you have like DOM so that you can do console logs and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not that hard to do. You, you create a JSON file and then you run something called TS Node over your files. That's it. Um, but it is some extra steps that you got to learn. But again, what I'm trying to, I guess what I was trying to say, if I go to my state file, it's really easy to actually start using. So the main thing in TypeScript that you can start using are called interfaces. So if you know anything about object-oriented programming, typically you have like an interface and then you write an implementation over the interface and then you pass that interface around between your objects to kind of abstract and allow your code to be a little bit cleaner. Um, so here in TypeScript, you declare an interface and you specify all the properties on that object and then you tell it like what type. So in this case, page is a string, to-dos is an array of to-do objects. And if I go to that definition here, a to-do has an ID, a text, and a text a checkbox. So it's really easy to define an interface, and then over here you can actually use the interface. So right, I have a method called create initial state, which returns a function in the function or that points to a function, and this function happens to return a state object. Okay, so right here after your your first parentheses you put a colon and you put the interface that you want your function to return. So, to, you know, if you're not returning anything, you could put void here so your function doesn't return anything. But I'm gonna put state so that whoever calls this method, like we can actually see what state is. Okay, so state is a state object. And then we're passing that around in our application so that when we go to something else that's using state, in fact, I don't even know what's using state here. Probably my actions or mutations. Uh, let me go to my mutations. So we're in our mutations now. I'm kind of jumping around, so sorry about that. But basically, whenever you do get state, you could just, you know, get that IntelliSense to know what is in my state object. I have to-dos, okay? So I could do that. And that's basically all you have to do. You, de you declare an interface and you attach that to various things. Like in this case, we have a function that returns something called mutations, which happens to have a get state and set state. Or we have the actual mutations, which, um, wait, no, uh, get mutation arg. So this is what this function takes in. It takes in an object of get state and set state, which happens to be this interface. And then it returns a mutations object, which has all of this. So it is some extra stuff you have to learn and write, but I think the payout is worth it. I, the benefits way outweigh the cons, okay? So yeah, I just wanna make a video that just kind of talk about a little bit about TypeScript and why I think I'm gonna start using it and also get your opinion on how angry you all will be if I start doing my tutorials in TypeScript. But again, the only reason I'm doing this is to help you all out. And I do think that TypeScript is a, a better solution in terms of building out applications and especially for beginners who need that extra help. Um, as long as you're willing to learn a little bit more about setting up projects in TypeScript, which isn't that difficult. All right, so if you have any comments, um, be sure to leave them below. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe if you were not already subscribed to my channel. Like always, this has been a Web Dev Junkie video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.